Hello, this is Machine Dazzle coming to you from my studio. I have Dolly Parton with me and we're about to have a good time, y'all. We are going to work on a project that I'm very excited about and I think you will be too. But first, I want you to have the basics. And the first thing you need is a container. Now, um, it could be anything. Of course, I love to use uh, things that I have laying around. I like to recycle, reduce, reuse, recycle. Coffee cup, this is one of my favorite cafes. It should be a container with a lid that fits. Oatmeal container, a raisin container here that I'm working on that I'm trying to empty. Today, I'm going to use this um, yogurt container. Next, you want some foam, maybe some styrofoam. I like to use this kind of foam. Um, this is made out of recycled plastic you can get at the uh, craft store. Um, and if you don't have these, you can just get like plain flat foam. Um, I think this came in a box um, and it was protecting something, which is another great way to recycle it. Um, but we're gonna need some really thin foam. Toothpicks. Next, we're gonna want some poster board or a heavy kind of paper. We probably want some kind of string. Um, I have this, this is like red and white striped, like baker's twine. I have this string. I have different strings. You're probably gonna want some paint. Next, you're gonna need some glue. I love hot glue because it's instant and it's fun. So a hot glue gun with some hot glue sticks. Um, Elmer's glue, hodgepodge. I like to have all different kinds of glue around depending on what I'm doing. And then of course, the fun stuff. Fun, decorative craft items. Things that are fun to work with. You know, I have pipe cleaners, fabric. I love this glittered paper. It comes in all colors. Flowers and little plastic studs and plaps like rhinestones. And fancy, shiny, um, acrylic rhinestones. This is just like decorative tape, flower petals, colorful plastic bags maybe, wrapping paper. Okay, the most important thing you need for this project is a picture of someone who has been important in your life. I'm choosing my friend Viva, um, who is my best friend. Um, she, we used to be roommates. She uh, makes me breakfast. Um, she's lent me money. She's like done things for me. Um, she's my music director. She plays electric guitar. We make rock and roll music together. Um, she's very important to me and I've learned a lot from her. And so that's why um, I chose her. This is just a photocopy of um, an invitation of hers. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, cut out her face and probably her little um, logo too, and I'm gonna mount it on poster board. So this is what we're going to be making, a shrine to someone who is important to you. You can call it a shrine, you can call it an altar. Um, there are many things that we could call it, but let's get started and uh, this is going to be super fun. Okay, first we're gonna take our container and we're gonna cut a window. Mine is star-shaped. Next, we're going to take this off, take the lid, and we're gonna cut our foam to fit it on. Make sure that the main part of the container can go back on easily. In case you're wondering what the foam is for, it's going to be a base so that um, when we put on our portraits and other little details, we put all of those fun things on the toothpicks and they can be easily put right there and add this really great three-dimensional quality to what we're making. Next, we're going to decorate the inside of the container. I've got a base layer down on the inside. I used um, uh, the glitter paper, that glitter craft paper, and then up above, I use some of these fake rose petals. Just make sure that you can still close the container onto your lid. Okay, next we want to start decorating the outside. Okay, I have a, a nice base layer on the outside now, but the glue is still wet, so I'm going to help it dry. Dolly says, don't forget your hair dryer, y'all. Okay, I just covered it in this really fabulous sequin fabric that I had laying around. Um, 
I really want to clean up the edges of the window, so that's next. Okay, I kind of tidied up those edges. I used some fuchsia paint. I am going to continue to decorate this, but let's put this down for now. Remember this? Let's uh, start decorating this. Now, just to make sure, it's kind of important that, you know, these two things can close. We can always glue them together at the end. Okay, so I have the foam covered in some more glitter paper. I cut a circle, I scored it around the edges, and I just like hot glued it on. It still fits nicely here. You can see it from the inside. So, but I want to give it a little bit more detail. Something weird happened with the camera in this next bit, but you can still hear my voice. Okay, I added some rhinestones around, some really fun plastic ones. I still want to get some more details in here. I also added some to the inside, so when you look in there, there's a few, you know, interesting things. Um, we're still not done. We still need to clean up this edge here, so that's next. So we've really come a long way. Um, I have it just totally encrusted with all of these beautiful, um, just acrylic rhinestones that I got at the craft store. And um, all those little places that I thought might have been mistakes um, are now covered with really pretty things. So um, I wanna put like a little something on top and um, let's see what happens. Okay. We're really getting close to the end here and I'm really proud of this and it's really meaningful. I'm going to explain everything later, but see, I still have my window. That's where the picture of my important person is going to go. Her name is Viva and I'm going to add her picture next. But before I do, and because I'm kind of extra, I was thinking, well, I like this. This could sit on a shelf, a bookshelf or whatever, um, or I could add a string to it. I'm not adding a string to this one because I know where I'm gonna put it, but I would like to give it a little more height. And one of my favorite cafes um, usually gives me my breakfast sandwich in one of these. And so I keep them. And um, so I have another half one here. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I just gave it a little more height? So now I'm gonna decorate this. So now I'm almost done with my pedestal. So I have my original little box here and I covered that one takeout container. I painted it with this purple fuchsia color and then I glued on all of these beautiful um, faux rose petals. Um, but I'm still not done. I think I'm gonna do a little rhinestone work around the rim. Okay, I'm really happy. I have this base pretty much made. It fits right on there. And um, now it's time to add the final touch. Okay, Viva is inside. And as you can see, and then I added some extra little rhinestones in there. And I would love to do some more details, but I can always add to this later. Um, but I feel pretty good about it. So I'm actually just going to glue this together. It's kind of a perfect thing. And, of course, it has this wonderful little pedestal to sit on. But because I'm extra, I like to take opportunities. Not only is it a pedestal, but it's also a portrait of Viva's cat, which could stand alone. But I love surprises and I love secrets. I like knowing that it's there. And I know this cat very well. Her name is Dorothy and she's always around, under the bed, out in the garden, you know, looking for mice. She's a very sweet cat. Anyway, yes. So this is my finished shrine to Viva. And um, I just wanted to explain a few things why I made the choices that I did. Um, first of all, we both have a love of purple, probably because of Prince, even though purple is kind of my favorite color. Viva is a musician, we both love Prince, and um, he was known as the Purple Prince, and so, I don't know, all of these purple things, and we also um, planted a lot of purple flowers in the garden that we used to share. Um, there were cardinals in the back, and whenever we saw a red cardinal in the garden, um, you know, we got really, really excited. So that explains that, um, and 
Right across the street from where we live is the Branded Saloon, which is a place where we both performed, and it's a really fun hangout. We spent a lot of time there. And, uh, you know, so that's kind of my reasoning. And um, she's a total superstar, which is why I gave her a superstar window. Okay, I can't wait to see you at the workshop. This is going to be so much fun. Come prepared, have all of your craft items on the table already with a cocktail, and why don't you dress up for the experience? Why not? Dressing well enhances the moment, kind of like amazing weather, don't you agree? Santa Claus is tired, he's taking the year off, so I need you to start thinking about who we are going to honor and bring to the holiday table this year. I'll see you soon. Hello. <laughs> are, we, are we ready oh. to go? I think we are so ready to go. Is everybody here? All right. Well, glad to have you with us. Um, I'm Kathleen from FirstWorks, and we really need this moment. You know, we were, we were just hearing uh, Taylor Mack with All Tomorrow's Parties uh, kind of mashup from the CD that precedes Holiday Sauce Pandemic. And we have with us today our beloved Machine Dazzle from now many years of making things and collecting things and infusing us with some spirit. Um, and we're really glad to have you all with us. Hi, Mary. <laughs> really nice to see you. And um, this is, is, is kind of our, our kickoff to leading up to December 12th when First Works and Brown Arts Initiative are, are really pleased to be co-commissioning and with a, a whole host of really prestigious presenters, Taylor Max Holiday Sauce Pandemic. So that is something for, for everybody who loves the music, the pageantry of machine, the, the um, humor, the outrageousness, the fabulousness, something to look forward to. But Today, Machine, we're in your hands making things. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. This is a pleasure and it is an honor. And um, look at what we're doing right now. I mean, I'd say we're all pretty lucky. Anyway, I'm happy. Thank you for welcoming me. Um, I, uh, um, so we're having a little workshop today and uh, just a little uh, history on why we're doing this workshop and I'll try to keep it quick because we need to just get crafting already. Uh, so, you know, every year, uh, you know, you know, the summer comes to an end and then fall comes and then it takes away the leaves and then all of a sudden we start seeing things around like plastic Christmas ornaments and cheap stuff and all of this stuff that doesn't really mean very much. And uh, I think it would be, uh, I'm trying to go a little more inward and, uh, you know, make the holidays a lot more important. Um, or more importantly, uh, um, have a little more intention around the holidays um, these days. And uh, so now, uh, moving into the holidays, um, I'm just forever and more and more and forever grateful for, grateful for all of the people in my life, um, particularly those who have been very significant um, to me, you know, growing up, learning, whatever. Uh, you know, I have amazing, amazing friends and I've had um, amazing elders in my life um, who helped make me who I am today. And these are the things that I want to think about around the holidays. You know, we're moving into, you know, Thanksgiving. I am thankful for these people and uh, for certain experiences. Uh, that's what I want to see and surround myself with uh, around these holidays that are coming up. And so um, I started making these little, uh, these objects that honor these people and I'm calling them shrines. And uh, I sent out a little video. Maybe some of you saw it, maybe some of you didn't, and you can always watch it later. Uh, but let me just show you an example of what you could make today. Um, and 
you're going to get started today, but you know, at this point, we, oh, we have like less than an hour, so you might not finish, but this isn't something that you have to complete. Maybe this is something that you start today and you work on it into way into December. Maybe you're never done with it. Maybe you keep adding to it. I will say that as a costume designer and as actually an artist in general, I am never finished. If you've seen a Taylor Mac show, you have seen a costume that is not finished. I keep adding to it. I keep changing it. Sometimes we go through a whole run of those show and I'm like, wow, you know, I really want to see this. Or it's like, you know, something really resonated with this particular show and it makes me want to do this. I want to change the costume, make it better. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I make living sculptures. Some of them are wearable. Some of them are barely wearable. Anyway, so here we are. We're having a shrine workshop. And I would just like to start with this one here. I have another one I'm gonna share with you um, in a minute, or probably a few minutes, because um, I'm gonna go from rectangle to rectangle, and we are going to each talk about who we're honoring today. And I know that uh, somewhere in here, one of these rectangles represents a lot more than one person. So we're gonna figure that out when we get to that rectangle. Right, Neri? Right. Anyway, so uh, if you saw the video, then this is a, lo a lot of repetition, but bear with me. Uh, okay, so if you can see, uh, my friend Viva, she's my best friend, this is a shrine to my best friend. Um, now, let's talk about why I chose Viva. Not only is she my best friend, she taught me a lot of things. First of all, we were roommates for six years. Um, we make rock and roll music together. In that time, um, you know, she, um, she is a fabulous musician. She taught me about music, about making music. Um, and she's the one who made it possible for me to start making music. That's been very significant since it's been one of my dreams for basically my whole life. Um, she's this radical feminist. She's taught me a lot about women and feminism. Um, she's a lesbian. She's taught me all of these things that I really, really didn't consider. Now, I'm a gay person, um, but you know, lesbians are different from gay men. They're different, you know what I mean? And she taught me so much. Um, what else? She's, she's Italian-American. She knows how to make, she's good in the kitchen. She makes me coffee. She makes me amazing food. Um, so um, I just wanted to honor her. And uh, just, I'm gonna talk a little bit about details. Um, one of my favorite Martha Stewart quotes is the devil is in the details. And I don't think that she really made that up, but she uses it. Uh, but I made certain design choices in this shrine that honor Viva and the relationship that I have with her. The most obvious one is purple. Um, we both love Prince. He's considered you know, the purple rock and roll Prince um, forever. Uh, we planted all purple flowers in our garden. So the purple represents all of that. Um, we would sit in the garden and these cardinals would come by. This is a... Uh, it was from some wrapping paper, this cardinal wrapping paper. I just like put it on there. And like whenever the red cardinal flew by, we were like, oh my God. And I've read about cardinals passing you by and apparently it's a messenger. Maybe someone who's no longer with us. I don't know. Anyway, I like to believe that kind of thing because it's kind of, it's, you know, I believe in hope and I believe in um, other worlds. Uh, and well, there she is surrounded in glitz. I've made her fun, shiny costumes before. So there's that. Um, there's this place right across the street from uh, where we live called the Branded Saloon. This really fun hangout, um, um, all good vibes, and we've had so many great times there. Um, she has her own band, it's called Viva, and that's the logo of her band. And she has a cat. And so I had this little shrine, and, uh, and I, thought, I thought it needed a pedestal, but the pedestal is its own shrine to Dorothy the cat on the bottom. And now I didn't have a picture of the cat, um, so I just drew one. Maybe you have a picture of who you're honoring today, and maybe you don't. You can, you can draw, sketch, paint a portrait. It doesn't have to be a picture, you know, like an actual photograph or something. So 
that's my shrine to Viva. And I just want to say, um, I took a yogurt container. This is my favorite yogurt. It's acidophilus yogurt, and it really tastes alive when you're eating it. That's why I like it. It's not too creamy. Like sometimes you put yogurt in, and it's like, it's delicious and it's creamy, but is it alive? What you want in yogurt is the living bacteria that is good for your gut. Some yogurt has it, some doesn't. Anyway, and you know, I started from the inside out. Um, maybe this is easier. So here's an ice cream container. This is going to be a shrine to somebody very soon. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, but, you know, I, I suggest, um, a, you know, a container with a lid. I am fond of half-baked. It's my favorite Ben and Jerry's flavor. We can argue about who has the best ice cream, but we're not going to argue because it's the holidays. We have more important things to think about. Um, so, you know, it has that lit, nice lid on it. So, you know, I like to turn it around. I cut out this window and, you know, decorate the inside. Of course, you know, I recommend maybe sketching out your design before you get started. That way you kind of have a plan. It's like your map to where you're going. Um, I decorated the inside and then, um, and then I decorated here and this is like, you know, I put some foam down here and I stuck a toothpick on the back of the picture so that I could like stick it in. And that means I could stick other things in. Maybe you don't have foam. Maybe you find another way to put the picture and like make it stand up right. There's a million ways to do it and there, none of them are wrong. And then, you know, I closed it and then, you know, safety. And then I, you know, I decorated the outside and you could decorate it with anything. You don't even have to have a container. Maybe you're decorating something else. You know, um, you're, there are no rules in the House of Dazzle, or Hodez, as I like to call it. Um, but I, I would like you to make something that you're proud of, you know? You're gonna put this somewhere special. You're really honoring someone today. And uh, I would like you to like, think about this like, this, this is what the holidays should look like. I don't need any more plastic balls that are going into the landfill. I don't need it. I do love those vintage glass balls though. And they're not even all balls. Some of them are just really cool drops. You know, the ones with the points on the bottom. I really love those. Anyway, like I said, no rules. And you know what? Full disclosure, I have plenty of those cheap plastic balls. I just want to turn them into something else. Uh, the holidays should be filled with people that are important to you. We don't need useless holiday decorations, whatever you happen to celebrate. I grew up Catholic myself. I don't really go to church anymore. So, you know, I grew up celebrating Christmas. Now I celebrate the season of giving. I celebrate the solstice, the changing of the seasons. I celebrate light in the literally the darkest time of the year. And this year, it's going to seem a lot extra dark. I mean, I don't know how your pandemic has been, but it's been a doozy on this end. However, I'm not homeless. I'm not starving. I really can't say that I have many problems. If you're not homeless and you're not starving, you're good. You know, notes to self. Okay, so now we are going to go from square to square, and you're going to introduce yourself. And why don't you uh, talk about who you are honoring today. And, you know, you can keep it quick, maybe like less than a minute so that we all get a chance to speak. Now, Holly, are you participating today? Okay, we're starting with you because in, on my screen, you're at the top, you're at the top. Fantastic. Well, hello everyone, my name is Holly. Uh, I work with FirstWorks, it's so great to see you all. Um, today, my picture is actually in the other room, so I have to go grab it after I share. But um, today I am honoring um, Mario from Super Mario Smash Brothers or whatever it is. And this is partially because my younger brother, and I'm living at home right now with um, two of my brothers and my parents. Um, it's one of the ways that I like to hang out with my younger brothers is by playing this video game. I am not very good at video games, but this is how I hang out with them. So I'm gonna honor Mario, and hopefully this means that I'll be able to put the shrine in a place where my little brothers are, because they're very particular about their decor. So it's gonna be kind of shoehorning my way, you know, into their space with like, look what I made for you, this Mario thing. So anyway, uh, that's who I'm honoring. 
and um, I'll pass it off. Machine, you can call on the next person. Excellent. I don't, I haven't heard of anyone honoring a, a fictional cartoon character before, but I like that idea. As long as it's important to you, it works in Hodaz. Okay, Kathleen, are you participating, Kathleen? I am, Machine. Okay, and what's it all about? Well, first, I have to put on my special sunglasses. Um, I'm using this container uh, from a brie uh, cheese container. And um, I don't have my photo yet either. I have to go get it. But I'm honoring my um, the kitty cat that I had growing up. Her name was Polly. And um, she was a lovely tiger cat. And she was a really important part of my family. And she loved the holidays. When we would buy the garland for the banister in the living room, she would nestle in the, in the garland um, before we would put it on the banister. And so I have some really nice photos of her just kind of sitting there in the garden, looking very pretty and lovely. And we've had her in our family for 18 years, so she was very, very special. I have a question. Are you going to include Garland in your shrine to her? I would probably include faux Garland because I don't have any real Garland right now. Um, oh, but works. I, huh? <gasps> Faux works, <laughs> yes. faux garland. And I'm sure with all of the craft supplies I have around my house, I will find some. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, wait, so Mary, we have a lot of people in your... Uh, so why don't we get back to you after we do all the other interviews? Because you're going to... I have a feeling you're going to take a while. I'm going to go to Judy. Hello, Judy. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. Or is Judy? No, we can't hear you, Judy. You're still muted. Fix that. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Hello, okay. oh, Judy. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm joining mostly out of curiosity um, to pick everyone's brain because it looks so creative, and. If I were going to honor one of our pets, it would be our dog, Bonkers. He was a true gentleman dog. We used to take his fur and turn him into a cool dude and do all kinds of things. And he was the sweetest, nicest dog. So if I, if I had time, I, I found out about this kind of late, but if I had had time to gather materials for our, one of our pets, it would have been Bonkers. Well, guess what? This is something that you can do tomorrow, next week, right. next month, yeah. next year. There's never a bad time to make a shrine for bonkers. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and if you just happen to later as we go through all of this, if you happen to find a picture of bonkers that you'd like to share, just speak up and share it. Oh, thanks. He... I, I didn't find the picture yet, but he was the, he was a terrier, his daddy was a champion fox terrier, and his mother was a beagle, and he had that fluffy fur, he didn't shed, he was just, he would sit on the back seat of the car and sway side to side no matter what I was doing, and he was just a real gentleman. Oh, bonkers. Okay, yeah. well, thank you sharing and hey if you need to leave the screen and you want to go and start like gathering materials and start crafting something plug oh, in that great. hot glue gun go for it go for it ah, no super. rules and hey. hotels okay um wait who's next to in the raspberry it's not a beret but it's a it's a little uh, your name isn't showing up on the screen i know maybe it's just mike oh kelly there it is Hi there. Um, so Judy's my mom, so I invited her to this. Um, and I, yeah, uh, I just, I thought that this would be really interesting. I saw the Taylor Mac performance at the Vets about, whatever that was, about 14 months ago, and it just was so affirming and world expanding. Um, I really, like, it made me grateful to be in the world with people like you and, um, 
and Judy who have that kind of vision um, that's really inclusive. So um, anyway, but yes, yeah, so and what my mother is saying about our dog Bonkers, oh yeah, and they were best pals. Um, so I was thinking about who I might want to make a shrine to, and I was thinking about people in my life. But then I'm also going to choose an animal, and I'm going to choose my cat, Jack, because I've been living with brain cancer for 10 years, and, um, and Jack has been like my chemo cat. Like when I need to rest on the sofa, um, he is just with me. I mean, all I need to do sometimes is look at him, and he comes, and he's really comforting to me, and he is... I don't know, he makes really good eye contact, like a dog. Um, and we found out this summer that he has congestive heart failure. So um, I just, I feel like I wanna honor him because it already sort of feels like we're maybe living on borrowed time. And Do you have a picture of Jack or is Jack actually there with you right now? Hold on, I can grab him. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised he didn't already come over and, and show himself. Hey, Jack also communicates like a dog. He told me where the snacks were in their cupboard when I was cat sitting. He stared at me until I looked at him and then he put his head up, walked out to the kitchen, sat down and looked at the cupboard where the snacks were till I got the message. There's <laughs> Jack. Smart cat. Here's my baby. Here he is. Oh, reminds me a little bit of Dorothy the cat, Viva's cat, like yes. a tuxedo cat. Look at that. Yes. Oh my God, Jack, Cute. look, family, family. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that's very sweet, and I look forward to seeing, like, what you're going to craft. At the end of this, we'll all hold up what we're working on. Um, yay! Okay, listen, Kathleen First Works, are you crafting with us or not? <laughs> I wasn't sure if you, I know that you were, may or may not have been prepared. I'm not sure, but in case you are, you can come back onto the screen and Suzanne. And Suzanne, are you crafting with us today? I can't remember. I just want to know. Uh oh, Suzanne. You are not? Okay. I told her she should be prepared. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna go to um, Diana, who I cannot see your picture, but I can see that you're there. Um, on my screen, you're at the bottom of the screen. Is Diana going to show themselves? And maybe, maybe not. I can't hear you either, so I'm not <laughs> She might be gathering her material. Okay, so Diana, we'll try to come back to you. Okay, so now we have a lot going on up in this. I feel like it's almost like, like Celebrity Squares. Mary. So what's it all about? You have uh, several people with you, correct? Well, I did have several people with me, yes, except that I have a different class now. So I started some kids down at the other end of the building mm -hmm. and they were Zooming in, but they're having technical difficulty. Um, so now I'm back in my classroom mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna show you. Everybody say hello as I go Hi. by you. Hello. Um, so they're working on a different collage um, uh, activity, but we're going to, I'm going to participate and then I'm going to lead the, um, the other class that we started with and they were on here at the beginning. We're gonna go through it with them on Monday because that group needs the step-by-step -step slow instructions. So okay. rather than having them get behind, we're gonna do it with them on Monday after I create an example today. And I'm gonna use my Quaker Oats. Ooh, a big um, one. A Good. big one. And my, mine is going to honor my daughter, Leah, who's gonna turn 11 next Friday. And okay. she's gonna have a COVID birthday, unfortunately. And she's also um, on hybrid learning at school, which is a big bummer because she likes to be in school. So there's a lot of sadness and loneliness right now. So I wanna make her something dazzling to okay. let her know that even though I yell at her a lot when she's not doing her schoolwork, I still love her and um, want her to have a happy birthday. Well, that's fabulous. Okay, I love it. Okay, so now I know that 
Holly and Kathleen, you didn't have your picture earlier. Did you happen to get that picture yet? So Not yet, but I will if you run get and get it. it just now. hold it up so you can share it. I'll run and get it now. Okay, great. Yay. Okay, well, so now everyone has their hot glue gun plugged in and you have your craft supplies out and you are crafting. Oh my gosh, we're half like halfway through. Um oh. And I want to say that, um, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Oh yeah, Judy, you might want to, um, I'm going to mute it. Mute it. Yeah. That way, that way you can put your music on. Okay. Well, since this is, uh, being filmed, I'm going to tell you, uh, so I told you that I've been, uh, thinking about, um, my elders recently. And this is something that we will revisit when you see the Taylor Max show on December 12th. Um, and I'm really excited to see it. And I hope that you can join us for that. Uh, I want to tell you about uh, my friend, Fenet. And uh, you know, you can craft while you listen to me. You don't actually have to watch me uh, talk because all I'm gonna do is talk for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. So, uh, Fanette was a true elder. She's no longer with us. She died in 2017. I met Fanette in uh, 1997. Um, I was 24 and I had gone to France to live for about a year. Um, I had some artists who lived in the south of France who are from that area who invited me to come and stay. And I did. And Oh, Judy, you're, uh, you're still not muted, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Chime in. Um, here, I'll have some more kombucha. Mm. Mm. There's turmeric in it. So good. All right. So, um, and I met this woman. Her name is Fanette, and she was interesting, and she was cool, and uh, she seemed to know all of the interesting people in this really small town, in the south of France. The town is called Pezines. Um, it's kind of in between Montpellier and Bézier, if you look on a map. It's very beautiful. It's very clean. Um, uh, an interesting uh, fact about Pezines, um, Nostradamus lived there for 19 years. There's definitely this interesting psychic energy running through that space, and I definitely picked up on it. So there I was. I was making art. I was learning. I, I had studied French uh, for three years um, in school. So I was familiar with the language so I could get by. Um, and uh, so I was making art. I had like a studio. And um, uh, the only other uh, work that I could get was picking grapes, which happened at the end of the summer. Uh, so, you know, the summer, and it's very hot there. Um, and so the end of the summer, it's still kind of hot. And um, it's like real manual labor picking grapes. Um, I'm six foot five and, you know, bending over uh, was an issue. And like using your knees for hours, uh, you know, <laughs> you know they, they give out uh, eventually. And then your back starts to give out. And uh, so um, Fanette um, saw that I was suffering a little bit. And she started making me hot baths at the end of every day. And then she started making me lunch, breakfast and lunch every day. I would go before the sun rose. We would start picking grapes and we didn't, and we didn't stop picking grapes until the sun was down. It was five weeks, nonstop, no days off. Um, my hands were stained afterwards with all of the grape juice. I had an amazing tan. It was great, it was great. So um, Fanette really became a friend to me in that time. She saw that I just could use a little extra help. Now, I was staying in this beautiful 18th century house that my friends put me up in, and the electricity was not great. It was kind of off and on, and there was, uh, the plumbing was, uh, you know, not great. There was no hot water, uh, not even in the summer. So when it started to get colder, Fanette um, asked if I'd like to stay with her for the winter, and I was like, yes. And uh, over that winter, I got to know her very well. Um, you know, I was 24 and, you know, still very impressionable. And I, uh, she taught me so much. Um, 
First of all, she taught me about food and about how to make food. She is French uh, and fabulously French. Everything that came out of her kitchen was magic. It tasted amazing. Julia Child, I just want to say, was educated in France. And I don't know about you, I'm a big, fan, a big fan of Julia Child. Anyway, enough said. She's French, amazing food. And I, every time I go into the kitchen, um, I think about how she would do something. In her kitchen, then she had like this little, like, um, this little like cow figurine, which she ended up giving to me the last time that I saw her. And now it lives in my kitchen. Okay, so she taught me about food. Um, Fanette taught me about fashion. Fanette was a fashion model in the 60s and into the 70s. She modeled with very famous people like Twiggy and Varushka. And uh, if you know fashion or you were uh, you know, aware at that time, then you probably knew who these people were. Um, uh, Fanette knew the designers, like she knew Christian Dior. She knew Yves Saint Laurent, um, all of these people. Uh, and I, you know, she taught me how to make things. She, after her modeling career, she became a fashion designer. Her, uh, her specialty was cashmere knitwear. And I inherited, inherited a, a couple of her moth-eaten sweaters because you know, moths, they love the cashmere first. They'll go to the wool after, but they prefer the cashmere. I prefer cashmere too, who doesn't? Anyway, so um, she taught me about like food and she taught me about fashion and like, you know, what was going through uh, the brains of these, uh, you know, the, the designers and they would, you know, when she was a model, they would tell her, walk this way. This is the feeling. It's like, wow. You know, I, I started to like really, really get into it. Um, Fanette taught me about art. Um, now I'm an artist and uh, she had this, uh, this, incredible life. She met so many artists in her lifetime. She had an amazing collection. Her, all of her walls were just covered, very salon style, in paintings, and drawings, and collage. There was sculpture. Um, and we would sit in her salon, and she would talk to me about the artist, about why they made all of these decisions, where this piece came from, what it was made out of, like all of it. She, it was like an art intensive. Fanette taught me about music. We would sit in her salon and listen to music. Um, uh, it was one of the first times of my life where I actually sat down for long periods of time and did nothing but listen to the music. She introduced me to Nina Simone. She introduced me to Talonius Monk. She introduced me to Miles Davis. She introduced me to Ella Fitzgerald. She introduced me to Eric Satie. Every time it rained, she put on Satie. And if you know Satie, you probably know the song that she put on. And she would put it on loud. I remember one time, um, now this beautiful little French town, they would give like tours of it. And you know, she was like, oh, oh, the tourists. And she would open up these huge, beautiful flaps on her window and she would blast something like, Barcelona by Queen. Um, anyway, she was really, really fabulous. So she taught me about food, fashion, art, music, listening. Um, she taught me about people. Uh, she came from a broken family, a, a broken Jewish family in France um, who were World War II survivors. Um, she herself actually kind of left home at an early age and went to London. That's where she was discovered as a model and whatever. Um, but you know, when you have these experiences in your life, you learn a lot about people. What were they thinking? Why did they do this? And you know, being a survivor, that gives you a lot of information moving forward in the rest of your life. She taught me about these things. Um, so she taught me a lot about people. She also taught me about love. When I met her, she was in her 50s. She had many men in her life. She had given birth to five children um, who were like close to my age, um, actually, or the youngest one. Uh, uh, she taught me about you know, all these different men, like what worked in the relationship? What didn't work? Why was it magical? 
uh, you know, would she do it again? You know, you know, that kind of thing, you know, one relationship, you learn, you learn even more about people through relationships. You learn, you know, you know what you learn what love is. Eventually you do, eventually you do. And um, I had very little experience in relationships at the time. So my ears were open. She taught me essentially about everything good in life. I think food, fashion, music, love, people, art. It's like it basically, it sums me up. Like it's like one sentence. Um, so I want to make a shrine to her, but uh, there's two interesting facts about Finette. She was a fashion model. She had her picture taken like a million times more. She never liked pictures of herself. She didn't like to look at herself. She didn't like her own image. Everybody else liked her image. She didn't like her image. I don't have any pictures of Fanette. So when I make a shrine to her, I'm gonna to have to be creative. Maybe I use the cow. I don't know, maybe I use, maybe I use a picture of Nina Simone. And I, you know, there are interesting, you know, creative ways that you can uh, honor someone without a picture to them. So just in case you don't have a, a, an actual photograph, it's okay, you don't need a photograph, you can honor people. Uh, she would probably be very honored if I just um, went to my kitchen and cooked something the way that she would you know, prepare it in her honor, you know, with a glass of red wine. I'm sure she'd be delighted. Um, and another interesting fact about um, Fanette is she was born on October, Friday the 13th, and she died on October, Friday the 13th. She was a French Jewish witch. And I don't know, I, like I said. Now, in case you haven't gathered, that is an elder. That, that is an example of someone that you really learn from. So when you watch the Taylor Mac holiday sauce pandemic, um, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about elders again on December twelfth. But I did start making a shrine to one of my favorite fashion designers, Alexander McQueen. Um, I've been thinking a lot about him recently, and he was a very big influence on me. Um, and I would like to say that you know he died many years ago. At this point, I think he might have been two thousand eight. I can't quite remember or nine. Um, he took his own life. I think it would be interesting for you to, uh, maybe you know this, um, but did you know that suicide is up 200% since COVID happened? This is a really great time to check in with your friends. Maybe this is a really great time to check in with yourself. Who knew that one of the most successful fashion designers of all time would take his own life? You know, sometimes the pressure gets to be too much. Um, he, didn't, they, he didn't even need a pandemic to do it. Anyway, I'm making a shrine to him. And let me show you a sketch. Um, if I sketched it out first, and I think this is a good idea, sketch out your shrine, and that way you can like, you know, you can plan it out. Now, this is a big one. The one that I made for Viva, that was only one, one level. This one's a little extra. This involves a yogurt container and a coffee cup on top to make it extra tall. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a doll or, you know, like a, a figure. Um, so down here, we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. A good foundation is a good place to start. Um, so inside this yogurt container i have all of these old spools of thread some of them are empty but many of them are wooden in case you don't know they don't make spools out of wood anymore it's been plastic since at least the 60s um i have these old spools of fabric they might be from the 20s or 30s i don't actually know when they're from uh, but i do know that they are now in this shrine and so all of these like spools of thread. And then um, there's a little skull here. Um, he really loved his skulls, Alexander McQueen. And I have one that's carved out of quartz, like uh, crystal quartz, and it's really beautiful. And I've had it and I, I'm like, what do I do with this? What, I just loved it as an object. Now it's in the shrine. Next up here inside the coffee cup, um, 
I have this little star detail. It was, at, I found it at a craft store. It's like this silver star um, a craft store in Berlin with this, this pressed embossed paper. It's really pretty. I'm going to show it to you in a second. And then um, I don't have a picture of Alexander McQueen yet, but I actually want a proper picture. I don't want to make a portrait, but that's going to go there. And then, you know, I want it uh, to look like, you know, someone's wearing a creation, you know, it's a, it's a dress, it's a shrine, it's a doll, but it's a dress, but it's a shrine, it's an all, all kinds of things. And uh, then I'm going to put a picture of a model from one of his fashion shows up at the top. I haven't decided which picture yet, um, but I'll, now I'm going to show you like how far I've gotten on the shrine to Alexander McQueen. Here. Here it is. Um, so um, I'll let's start at the bottom, right? So there it is. There's my little quartz skull. I need to. Oh, I need to stand him up a little bit better. But then there's all of those old spools of thread. Um, and I took. I had um, all of these pearls were from this vintage dress. I got this vintage dress. It was black and it had all of these pearl details on it. I got it for about $10 at a secondhand store. So I just tore it apart because, you know, the dress wasn't all that. The best part of the dress was the pearls. So I took it apart and I used that around the edges. Um, I just, I used to be a jewelry designer for 16 years. So I have a lot of things around. Um, I had this pearl in my drawers. So I just wanted to put that little pearl in there. There's a the little skull of it. Um, I had this tiara, the, um, this rhinestone tiara um, that I used on something and it broke. So I broke it apart even more and I just like included some little like tiara, little fun, like little bits here. So next level, this is where Alexander is going to go. There's that little star detail that I'm talking about. And so I'm going to put a, a great picture of him right in the center of the star. And up there, if you look way above the star, there's like this little rhinestone ball. It's kind of like a I think it's kind of like Alexander at the disco. It's kind of like a little disco ball up there. So I have that. Um, I have this fabric already. It's, um, it's a black lace with gold lurex running through it. It's really, I just, I really love this fabric and it feels really nice. Um, and uh, then this, this was like the veil off of a vintage hat that I had probably from the 50s. Um, it's like a navy blue net. It's really fragile. It might even be 40s actually um, with these little ivory um, velvet flowers. And I just thought, what a great thing. And then like this little like bow detail on the back. And um, because Alexander was, he had a bit of an edge and he loved monstery things and skulls. Um, I had this, uh, you know, one of those plastic jaws from like, you know, you put them in your mouth when you're a, a child or childlike. Hmm. And I just thought, I think he'd really appreciate that detail. I would actually like to do that in real life. Something like big like that. It looks like it's eating the model, whoever's way. And then there's my little sketch of a model up on top. Like I said, I haven't decided which one, but I definitely want it to be um, a model that he used often that he really liked. Oh, just a nice way to, you know, honor him. And just so you know, I didn't skimp. The pearls go all the way around, but don't look too much because I haven't decorated here yet. You can still see the yogurt container. Now, this one is not my favorite yogurt. This is Hawthorne Valley, but this is really good yogurt. I think you probably have Hawthorne Valley in um, its East Coast anyway. So my shrine to Alexander McQueen, it is a work in progress. We'll just put this over here. Oops, oops, oops. <sighs> That was quite a mouthful. Okay, does anybody, um, has anybody, uh, does anybody wanna share anything so far? Should I continue talking? Do you need more pep talk? I have something to share. Before we do that, I would like you to take a good look at this object. Ooh, what could it be? What could it be? With any luck, you just might see it again if you tune in to Holiday Sauce Pandemic on December 12th with Taylor Mac and myself, I won't give it all away. I like surprises, but there is now me making these shrines. These shrines that I've made, these are for me. These are for me to remember these important people in my life. I'm not gonna give this shrine to Viva. Why would I give her a shrine to herself? 
no, this is for me. This is for me. But I do like the idea of making a shrine for someone, but I don't want that shrine to be that person. Why would you have a shrine to yourself? I mean, hey, it's a beautiful thing to love yourself. As RuPaul says, if you can't love yourself, how the hell can you love anybody else? And there's a lot of truth in that, believe me. So, um, I thought it would only be appropriate if I were to make a shrine for someone, who would that be for? I think I'm gonna make a shrine for Taylor Mac. Oh yes, oh Judy, oh. And if I was making a shrine, for Taylor, who would that shrine be? If you know Taylor the way I do, I have a feeling that he would really appreciate a shrine to Walt Whitman. He loves his Walt Whitman, oh yes. So I'm going to take this object, which is already pretty fabulous, and I'm gonna turn it into a Walt Whitman shrine, and I'm going to gift it to Taylor for the holidays. And, uh, I think Taylor just got a new house and he needs to fill it with some beauty. And um, I can't wait to go up there and see it. And um, anyway, this is it. Um, so just another little bit of, in, uh, you know, if you're gonna give a shrine to someone, make that shrine to someone that they really admire. Um, so what's great about making a shrine to Walt Whitman is, um, well, endless possibilities for like visual references, all of that poetry. Um, I think I might start with some blades of grass down at the bottom maybe, you know? I mean, even though blades of grass didn't mean literally blades of grass, blades of grass is a, a reference to pages of a book, particularly poetry, I believe. Um, but why not just, you know, play with it? Maybe blades of grass. I remember in this, there's this one, poem that uh, Taylor loves to recite. I've heard him do it a hundred times at least. And there is a line in there that said, the scent of these armpits, aroma finer than prayer. So I thought maybe, why don't I like draw some little armpits and like stick them around, you know what I mean? And maybe I have like little prayer hands and I like stick those around somewhere, you know? And maybe, you know, Maybe it gets a little cute. Maybe it gets a little sexy. I don't know. Um, flowers. Flowers are great. Maybe like sky. References to nature. These are the things that Walt Whitman loved. Really, that's what I want to do. So I'm not going to tell you what this object originally was because I'm expecting you to tune in on December 12th to Holiday Sauce Pandemic, and hopefully you'll see it. Hopefully it didn't get edited out. You know, I have to tell you that, you know, when, you, when you're a photographer, and a lot of you probably know this, when you're a photographer or a video artist, there is a lot that gets cut out so that because, you know, the finished product is uh, just the essence. You know, it's the essence of what you're trying to get across. Um, that's what becomes most important. That's what you end up sharing. But so much fun stuff gets left behind. It's on the cutting room floor. People never get a chance to see it. Um, I had an inquiry uh, earlier today. Uh, someone was like, oh, would you send me high res images? Uh, I was in Hawaii over the pandemic and I was making masks out of like palm fronds and leaves and things that were on the property. And uh, I put them on Instagram and someone, uh, you know, wants to do like an article about it. And uh, so he asked for some high res images of photographs and I'm like, but, and I'm like, well, why don't you go to Instagram and just choose the ones that you want and I'll send you the high res images. And so he did. And I'm like, well, you know, and then I went back, back in my camera, back in my camera. It's like, I photographed these masks probably a hundred times before I chose the one to post on Instagram. I mean, that's normal, right? But I'm like, you know, there's, I went back and this was the first time that I really looked back since I was there. And I'm like, wow. You know, there's some other really good ones here. Instead of giving him the same one that I posted on Instagram, I should give him, you know, something different, an insider scoop, something that, you know, the regular public doesn't have access to. Anyway, um, I sent him a few things. We'll see what makes it into the article, if it makes it out at all. You know, people, you know, people who um, um, create news or people who are mirrors to news, I should say. I mean, news 
people, I mean, do they really make up news? That would be fake news. Um, people who are interested in your work, you know, they, you know, you, they ask you questions and then they formulate, they, they usually have an edge and then, then the article comes out. It's funny, I've been interviewed many times and uh, uh, I always find that this interviewer, this reporter, they, they want me to say certain things because they have an edge. They're, they're including me in an article because they're, eh, I don't know, they have an angle. They have an edge. There's something, they want me to be a part of this thing and they want me to, they're, so they're trying to figure out how they can squeeze me into this, uh, their story. And so they ask me specific questions so that, you know, I can be included in the story. And, you know, anyway, that didn't happen this time, but it does happen. And, you know, we don't have to go on about that. Michelle, okay. do you think we could ask for some um, projects? to see what people have come up with. We're actually pretty close do. to ending. That was my next order of business. We only have seven minutes left to see all of these fabulous yeah. objects. Now I want to tell everyone, of course you're not gonna be finished with it right now. This is something that you should you know, work on, but just like imagine having these around your home around the holidays instead of all of this like stuff that doesn't really mean anything. I saw someone today on the PATH train with like a very sad store-bought wreath. And I'm like, oh, honey, it wasn't even real. It didn't smell good. It was very standard, you know, very lackluster, very, you know, I was like, oh, oh. I felt sorry for him because he doesn't have this. <laughs> anyway, okay, why don't we go square to square or rectangle to rectangle? And let's see what you've got. I've been talking long enough. Um, well, Holly, have you started? I, well, I procured my photograph, which here he is, Mario in all his glory. Oh, yes. Um, but my little brother informed me that this photo is not to be used in my shrine. So I have to come up with an alternative. Well, you can make a, can you make a copy of it? Like scan it and print it? I think so. And then we also, he gave me the idea, um, he's got a whole bunch of kind of dismembered action figures in his room that Perfect. could be very interesting. And then here is my cardboard box, which had my glasses in it that I ordered. So this is what it. I'll use and the, the stuff will kind of, so not a lot of progress, but definitely some ideas. I like the idea of all of the dismembered little action figures. That makes it like really cool and totally authentic, I think. I love objet. Okay, good job. Thank you, thank you. Um, Judy, did you happen to do anything? I know you've been listening the whole time. It's okay if you didn't. Okay. Oh. Now, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. I've been watching very closely, learning a lot. Uh, and I didn't find the picture of Bonkers. But I did have a container here, and it seems to have disappeared. And it had a few cut out things in it. But I will, I will try to complete it. Okay, good. It can be, like I said, any day is a good day to make a shrine for bonkers. Okay. Every day. It, that's true. That's right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> Kelly. I have figured out my container, but not really anything else yet. Okay, okay. Do you have it? Can we, what is the container? It's, um, it's an empty Quaker oats, a uh, small, like the steel cut oats. A lot of oatmeal today. This is very exciting. <laughs> I love oatmeal. I have a container over there. I brought it in and I keep forgetting. I need to bring in like some kind of like a, a container for the actual oatmeal because I want to use the container. I haven't eaten the oatmeal yet. <sighs> anyway, I just like the, there's something about those oatmeal containers. They're very satisfying, I think. Make perfect shrines. Maybe I've been wanting to make one to my mother. Um, it's going to be, it has to be very glorious, of course. It's going to include lobsters and rosé wine because um, she loved that and Definitely some flowers and angels. She has this whole amazing story about angels. Anyway, mom, don't worry. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming, mom. <laughs> Every day is a good day. And 
to wake up and make a shrine to your mother. Okay, Kathleen, have you done anything? Have you, do you have something to share? Actually, that's a good segue. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to use a different image. Can you see? I can, and I love it. So I'm gonna change the image. This is my little Polly in the middle, but my mom and Polly had a great relationship. And as I was looking through my craft stuff, I found this pencil with smiley faces on it. Mm -hmm. And this is my mom's favorite image and yellow is her favorite color. So I wanna find a picture of mom with Polly and incorporate the pencil into my shrine. I love it. I love the idea of putting that pencil in there. <laughs> That's so great. It can become practical. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it can never be used again. It's part of the shrine. Don't touch it. Don't touch right. it. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Uh, Mary, do you have anything to share? Any of your students? Anything that you want to show us? Here's my shrine. So I just covered my oatmeal box with some yellow paper and I made like a little drawbridge that I will look at that. Sort of oh my god. Oh. You know, I always save all my, my watercolor demonstration papers and I tell the kids never to throw anything away because you never know when you're gonna need a door for your drawbridge so or true. anything else, right? And um, just some tissue paper inside right now with flowers. But all the dazzle stuff is down in the other room with the other kids. So when I go there on Monday to help them with this project, um, I'll have all the dazzle stuff uh, to add to it. So I thought I'd put her little picture right here. And I, I feel like it's a good start. It's great. And plus, when she, uh, she needs a break, you just like put the drawbridge back up. It's like, OK, you've had enough for now. You know, oh, wait, you want to come out? OK, great. Sure. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. That oh, looks great. If only I had an ivory tower to put her in. Thank you. <laughs> well, you could change it from yellow to ivory. <laughs> I could. I could. Um, uh, okay. Who else is here? Who else? We never heard from Diana. Diana, are you still here? Would you like to, would you like to make an entrance? Walt Whitman would like you to make an entrance. Just saying. Okay. All right, Diana. Well, we can't hear you or see you, so it's okay. Maybe you're just like a spectator, but I know that Viva would love to see what Diana has going on. Let's just see. I forgot to tell you, you know, Viva has her own band. Um, and uh, so the image of her screaming there, she was actually singing in that moment. It was from a video shoot and it was from one of her promotional cards. That's why I had it. And uh, the window that I cut into the yogurt container is in the shape of a star because she's a total superstar. <gasps> High concept, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Machine, we're gonna take a moment right now and Holly's gonna put up a feedback form because we have um, actually gone a little bit past one o'clock. Yes. But we are curious to know um, how people felt about the workshop. And okay. so if you could just take a minute to fill it out, and uh, that would be really helpful for first work. Great. And um, Mary, you could fill it out on behalf of your students maybe, but it would be awesome if we could find out from your students uh, what they thought individually later on. And, um, and I don't know if anybody uh, wants to show, maybe just show your, your shrine as a final image. Just yes. Maybe. maybe yeah. yeah. Everybody, everyone did something creative today, which is really exciting for us. And um, I just wanted to thank you, Machine, for conducting this workshop. It's always great for our community to have these really um, engaging and artistic experiences. So thank you for contributing to that. And I also wanted to thank the Brown Arts Initiative for partnering with us on this project. It's really exciting for us to partner with them and also Age Friendly Rhode Island. And a big shout out to Hope High School for having their students participate, uh, and especially Mary McMurtry 
and Christine Bobian, who are the uh, visual art teachers there. Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this video will be available on the Brown Arts Initiative YouTube channel so that you can view it and share it with your family and friends and everyone can create shrines. It will be available for a limited time from uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas. So definitely over the winter solstice, which I believe is December 31st at 5.03 in the morning. So that could be a really exciting way to celebrate the solstice. So click on this video. Yes. And maybe I'll even do an Instagram live. You can join me there and I'll encourage you. We can shrine to our heart's content. That would be so much fun. And also don't forget about um, Holiday Sauce Pandemic Version, Saturday, December 12th at 7 p.m. Please join us and we hope to see you again soon. I just bought a ticket. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, see you there. Shriny, happy people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Machine and everybody. This was just wonderful. Thank you. Our Thank pleasure. You. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.